faith. By definition, it's something that is felt with strong conviction without tangible evidence of its existence. Many claim to have it, but how do we attain it? It can't be held. It can't be sold. But it can be passed down. Faith is invaluable to those who feel it. How is it that this belief can unite us regardless of our differences? It's because of conviction, that feeling inside that links so many, from the far corners of the earth to the closest reaches of our neighborhoods. Faith is all around us. Faith springs from a glorious past forward to a promising future. The faith that those who not so quietly defeated rivals and redefined record books would inspire their brethren of today to reach such epic accomplishments. And all along, there are those who cheer. In their minds, they envision. In their hearts, they believe. And because of that, they are simply known as the faithful. Growing up in El Paso, Texas, um, pretty much everybody's a Cowboy fan. Growing up, I was 16, I went over to my cousin's house and her mom is a big Niners fan. You know, football game was on and I'm like, okay. So I sat there and was watching the game and um, she was pointing out to me like their quarterback and it happened to be Joe Montana and I was like, who's that guy? Typical girl, like fell in love with the quarterback. So when I did meet Gary, I had asked him, so do you like football? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, oh God, here's another Cowboys fan. He started to tell me, no, I'm a Niners fan. So she didn't believe me. She thought that her parents had told me that she was a Niners fan. And he was like, no, I'm seriously a Niners fan. And so when I asked her, which team do you like? She said, I like the 49ers. And I was like, no, there's no way you like the 49ers. Nobody here likes the 49ers. She couldn't believe it. I had to take her to my house and show her all my knickknacks and my hats and my shirts. He was all freaked out when I told him that we're going to get married now and we're going to have little Niner babies, which now we do, but back then it wasn't so funny. High school sweethearts from the Lone Star State, seemingly cosmically linked not only for their love of the 49ers, but for their disdain for a team that dominates Southern Texas. Mamas, don't let your babies grow up to be cowboys. However, these native Texans would venture west to the arid desert of Arizona, where they still thirsted for their niners. We lived in Casa Grande, Arizona, and when we moved out there, we had some neighbors who were very football-oriented. They were big Vikings fans. And Gary and, and Mike um, would kind of go at it. They'd both hang out their flags outside. It was great. Inspiration, it comes to different people in different forms. And for Gary and Diana Martinez, that inspiration came from an invite, an invite that would change their life and open their eyes to what would be the genesis of an idea. He invited us to go watch uh, the Niner versus the Vikings game. So we ended up coming down to Tempe and we went over to Four Peaks Brewery. And when we went in there, I'm not kidding you, it was a sea of purple. The vibe you got when you walked in there was like awesome. I mean, from the patio all the way inside the bar, nothing but a sea of purple. This is what we wanted. And when we left, I told Mike, I'm so jealous that you guys have a place like this in Arizona, away from Minnesota, and you guys are like one. Just to see it, and I'm thinking to myself, there's got to be something for us. A need for a place that could be called their own. A simple idea with no simple answers. The startup AZ-49 Empire was on the lookout for new members and a watering hole that was empathetic to their cause. And they found just the place, the native New Yorker, a local establishment in Ahwatukee, Arizona, and it helped catapult the chapter to numbers they had never imagined. We wanted a familiar place to call home and to feel welcome. And being away from home home and in Arizona, we needed to create our own family. Family, a simple word with so many definitions. Definitions that don't necessarily have to do with bloodline as much as a common bond. That bond for many of the AZ 49er empire was created by a move to Arizona and the need for a group that shared each other's faithfulness. Coming down here, being born and raised in San Francisco and being a diehard 49er fan, I used to go to games out there at Candlestick Park. 
moving to Arizona, it's a little different because it's not really 49er country. So you always look this for something to attach to because my roots are always with the 49ers. Obviously, Arizona is not 49er country. Well, getting part of this AZ empire makes me feel like it actually is. Went into a sports bar one day and the empire was in a room and somebody looked at me, saw me in my jersey, Gary, Diana, and the rest of the empire was in there. And from there, that's where it all started. Started out with three, four people going to just a bar to watch a game on the small TV. We call that place home until l recently where w this club just blew up. I mean, there's too many people in there. People are getting turned away at the door. Like any good leaders would do, Gary and Diana began the search yet again for the well-being of the club. Their search might not have turned up any takers, except like the namesake of the team they so dearly loved, they struck gold in the heart of the city. We were out with a friend of ours just having a drink, and we saw the flags outside, and I was excited. I'm like, any bar that has the Niner flags outside deserves our business. So we came in, and we're hanging out, and, and um, Steven, he tapped me on the shoulder. I see his tattoo, and I, and I just tap her on the shoulder. I'm like, what's up? Like, do you have any idea where we're a 49er bar? And I'm like, yeah, I saw the flags. Very excited to be here. Like, we just were, we couldn't believe that there was Niner flags outside the bar. My whole goal of becoming a 49ers bar was to get you guys to come to Gringo Sar and throw the party here, basically. I was like, sold. What the Niner Empire is all about is basically if you're a fan, you're a part of the Niner Empire. It is a 49er group located in enemy territory. It's about the best way I can put it. We see you're a 49ers fan and we know how difficult it is to be a fan in Arizona. And we have this fantastic group. Doesn't cost anything to be a part of it. All you have to do is show up and show your love for our team and be part of it. And that's all it takes. Nestled smack dab in the heart of Cardinal country, a collection of 49er fans organized almost a decade ago. From humble beginnings, the group grew. A solid allegiance was formed. And with every passing season, the AZ 49er empire expanded as the word spread to its faithful. It's a blessing to see everybody come together after all these years of struggling with just a little crowd. I mean, I didn't know there were this many 49er fans in Phoenix until I started you know, hanging out with the Empire. It's definitely a diverse group of people. It's kind of like San Francisco. San Francisco is probably one of the most diverse places you could ever be a part of. Being born and raised out there, uh, maybe that's part of the reason why I have an attachment here, because I feel like I'm at home. We didn't anticipate it to be this big at all. As the years keep growing and the word keeps spreading, I mean, Niner fans are coming out of everywhere where they were at home watching um, TV by themselves or got together with like a group of four. Being faithful outside the Bay Area can be a challenge, but to do so in the backyard of a divisional foe adds a difficult element to fandom. Gary Martinez, president of the AZ 49er Empire, has created an oasis for game day where his group can enjoy the game and cultivate friendships. Yes, on game day, this is our island. Um, this is kind of like, like, you know, this is the mecca of 49er fans. We all feel safe here, you know, no one's gonna mess with us and no one's gonna talk trash or anything like that. We do have a rowdy bunch and we do have a quiet bunch and everybody finds their way around things, but when we come together, everybody pretty much is rowdy because we feed off each other. They wanted somewhere that was a diehard 49er bar and we were willing to give them that. On the corner of South Mill Avenue and East Fifth Street in Tempe, Arizona, you'll find a little slice of heaven if you're a fan of the 49ers. Footsteps away from Arizona State University's campus, bar owner and manager Stephen Sperry flies the flag, literally, for the faithful. I knew from the first meeting with Gary that they were serious about this, like this was their life, and I wasn't gonna screw it up. I mean, we, we did everything from put up their, you know, their banner, like we, we have it up, you know, 24 seven. We got flags flying out front all the time. We really take care of them. Because the staff, and you know, management, our 49er fans, they know and understand us. They expect what we expect. You know, we want the 49ers blasting. We want every TV showing the 49ers and they want that too. Gringo Star has been nothing but 
a blessing to us. They let us use their DJ equipment. We play our Niner music. The uh, manager here told me, you guys can have every TV turned on the 49ers. And the sound is unbelievable. We have an arcade here where we open it up for the kids. The kids are having fun. Getting there and you see the game, it's real exciting. It's real exciting. We'll get you pumped up, hyped up before the game. You're sitting at home on the couch and you live in Arizona, come out here. It's an experience like no other. On a second and seven, Palmer's got time. And intercepted by Sam It's picked off by Reed. Now we got 200 people here every Sunday. <laughs> the part of the Sunday is unbelievable, I'll tell you this. I mean, you want to talk about energy and emotion. Uh, you know, we had a recent game, and, you know, at the end of it, I felt like I played because <laughs> I was that physically drained. It does. Everybody turns out, you know. It's all for one and one for all. We take a lot of heat, you know, on a weekly basis. People see our flags out front, and they're like, what the heck are you doing, you know? And especially being in Arizona, it's definitely hard being a 49er bar. But for all that hate we take throughout the week, we get 100% rewarded on Sundays. You know, anytime the 49ers play, we get 200 crazy fans in here. The whole place is decorated. You know, people driving by on the road, they have no idea what's going on. They're like, what the heck is going on at Gringo Star? They just, they, they don't understand. The party that happens each and every week at Gringo Star is just that, a party. Fun, rowdy, loud, emotional, and one other thing, organized. The secret to success for Gary and his crew is communication. So much so that the chapter formed a democratic group that takes the unit's well-being to heart, but none more than its faithful founder. The first time I met him, uh, we, you know, we sat down here at Gringo, ended up talking for like an hour, hour and a half, and uh, you can just tell he's, he's super dedicated to the club. I can't speak for other empires so much because this is the only true one I've been a part of, but I can't imagine anybody that brings it so close together like he does. It takes a lot of work, and I envy the fact that how much time he puts into it. Gary is always um, striving to, to create a, you know, a great atmosphere. He's such a good guy with a good heart. All he wants to do is be the neutral person. He wants everyone to get along and everyone to be happy and having fun. There's a lot of behind the scenes that happen with different people doing different tasks. But when it really comes down to it, Gary does make this group. A lot of people do look up to Gary and they'll say, you know, while you're not there, I'm not sure if I want to be there. He's emotionally attached to the 49ers with a lot of energy. I went to his house and he has memorabilia everywhere. You look around, you would think he's from the Bay He has pictures of the Golden Gate. And he showed a picture of himself back as a little kid in school on a bicycle with a black 49ers starter. I had the same coat, I had a gold one, and he has a black one. I tell you what, if you go to a house right now, he has that same coat hanging in his closet, looking brand new. He takes good care of you. The uh, only time I ever see it out now is that his son wears it, and that coat's a classic. I'm trying to find one right now. The group as a whole is probably one of the most energetic crowds I've ever been around. When you get around this group, it's like a constant tailgate that's going on. It's almost like you're going to the game, whether you're in tailgates, sitting in the stands together or box seats. They just bring that kind of energy. My favorite part of it is being with a bunch of just die-hard, loyal 49er fans that love the team like I do. We've had the ride, the highs and the lows, but it's just the atmosphere and the environment. Just knowing that you're going to see your AZ 49er family and just knowing that it's going to be a great time. You know, if you can't be at the game, at the stadium, then the next best thing is just to be with a big group of people that love it and enjoy it as much as you do. The AZ 49er Empire, it's not only a club, but it is basically people that love the 49ers that live here in Arizona. Just like the 49er organization, they're very, very classy. We treat people here with class and respect. Class and respect. It's not only the foundation of the AZ 49er Empire, founded in 2006 by Gary Martinez, but also the foundation of every good family. A word that's used often, but not lightly by those who don the red and gold in the Grand Canyon State. It's like a big family atmosphere. We follow each other on Facebook, events, weddings, births. We all have one thing in common, is the love for the 49ers. 
We all feel like we're all brothers and sisters here. Just very inviting, just very family oriented. You connect with someone and you know right away, you know, if they're going to be in your life long term or short term. These people are all long term. When we come here, it's just one big family. My family doesn't live here. The AZ 49er Empire has become my family. Honestly, that's what keeps us all attached. We all love each other. The team brought us together. We have a thing that we just started last year called the Niners Helping Niners. We need to help our own. We felt since we are a family, we kind of need to take care of our own family here. After successfully creating a community that rallies around their team and professes their faithfulness, Gary and the AZ 49er Empire decided to take it to the next level, focusing on the people in the group. They would choose one person within their family to funnel their love to each year. And although the group knew that it would be successful, they may not have known how personally touching the outcome would be. One of our Niner family members who was having job issues, so we all thought, well, hey, why not do like a Christmas Angel thing? But a year ago, I was in a car accident, started going back to work, I missed a lot of work. There was very little money left for Christmas time and it was really hard on me and I would mentioned it to one of the girls in the Empire. One day, Gary, his wife, and two boys showed up at my door with gift cards and money from the Niner for Niner charity and they helped me out and made it possible for my kids to have gifts that year and food on the table for Christmas. It was a blessing to just show up there unannounced and just be like, you know, hey, you know, it's not much, but it's something that'll get you by and they were just so grateful. Just remember just crying and just going to work with a big smile on my face. And it was a while since I smiled, going through all those months of trying to play catch up with my bills and knowing that I was gonna be able to provide for my kids that Christmas. And um, it was very humbling, you know, to know that there's other people out there that actually care for you. In times of need, comfort isn't always easily found. Such was the case for Mark Sanchez, a devout faithful and member of the AZ 49er Empire. Mark suffered a devastating loss when his 13-year-old daughter and six other family members' minivan was struck by a semi-truck that crossed the median. Tragically, all were fatally injured. No words or prayers could replace the hole left in Mark Sanchez's heart. But that didn't stop the group from remaining empathetic, loyal, and most importantly, an outlet for Sanchez in his time of need. July 29th. 2012, I lost my daughter. Uh, it was just hard to watch a game after that, you know? Well, for like me and a lot of others, it's what you live and breathe every day. It's not just the season, it's, it's those months waiting for the season. It's, it's the little things like that. Taking solace in numbers, watching a game with friends, those are the therapeutic things that we often overlook when we think of a football game. Perhaps it's just not wins that can heal a wounded soul. Sometimes it's something even deeper. Yeah, it's good to see a loss too, because it helps. You know, you could sit at home by yourself and see a win, but when you lose, that's when you probably... <laughs> it's good to look around and see other people wearing a jersey and just not giving up, you know what I mean? It's family. The group has become a family in its own way, and yes, we all do look out for one another and when Mark lost his daughter that was a very uh, a very hard and traumatic experience for him and his family so uh, we all the group rallied and um, we took we took donations they formed a car wash there are a lot of people that got involved with trying to help support uh, the Sanchez family during that difficult time so this is not just a fan group it's it's truly a family that's just an experience that you can't take away, which we would have never found had we not built the, the Niner Empire. Charity begins at home, and for us, home is our 49er group. They were just there, I guess, you know? People that genuinely care and reach out for you, even when you didn't ask for it, when the only thing you have in common is pretty much a team, you know? Commonality. That's what makes being a fan so special. It's knowing a person before you have even met them. It's sharing a bond because of a color our logo, and then having that bond grow and flourish, not only into fandom, but love for one another. Too often we forget how important that bond is, but we only have to pull up a seat at the Gringo Star and tip back a few with the AZ 49er Empire 
to have it all be refreshed. I mean, we're the AZ Niner Empire right here, but we're definitely the 49er faithful because we really believe in this organization. We believe in this team, Niner until we die. Faithful is you're there for the team, whether win or lose, bad season or good season. You're always there for the team. It doesn't matter. We've had years that were not so great, but we still came. We still rooted for them with all our heart. We still cheered and we still had a good time because we love the team. We don't love just the wins, we love the team. Being a part of something that you truly believe in. I mean, you gotta feel it, live it, and be part of it completely. Can't wait till Sunday, because I can't wait to watch my Niners play, and I can't wait to watch the Niners play with these group of people. Now, I don't know how well you can see it, but it says AZ 49er Empire on it, which represents us. It says 1971 through 2013, farewell season, Candlestick Park. And this one, it represents the present. It says, who's got it better than us? Nobody. It's like having the Niners on your heart right here. I, I love having it.